Okay. Alright, so this is my powerhouse. This is where all the electrical guts are. And it, it, the system is probably more complicated than it looks. Uh, the, the power from the, the 48 volts from the hydro turbine come in here to the charge controller and then it just directs the juice where it wants to go into these gigantic batteries which are you found those for me as the largest 12 volt batteries available in the United States <laughs> and so since I have a 48 volt system I have four of them in in series but still there's there's a lot of jewels in there yeah. I can tell you yeah and that's not the original bank right? they're not uh, these are well, four times more capacity than the first the first bank. So, so how long have you had these? I've had these for five years. Okay, and they're still pretty yeah. performed. No well. problem whatsoever. Okay. Um, and I've talked to the uh, manufacturers just about them, and and again, as long as they're not abused, in, in other words, as long as they're not drained frequently, which they are never drained. Well, that's not true. They've been drained twice. But that was a malfunction in, I had thrown the wrong switch. Um, they should have a 20 to 25 year lifespan mm -hmm. as a wow. practical matter. I mean, I think they're guaranteed for 10, but mm -hmm. they, from what they say, there's no reason they shouldn't last that long. Okay. So the other, the other part of the system is, as you see the solar panels come in, since they're a variable voltage and variable input, that had to be a whole separate control system for that. But then that feeds into the same. This is set up to accept voltage, I think, anywhere from 40 to 100, whatever yeah, it is. Maybe 150. Maybe yeah. 150, but yeah. the output, again, is set at 48 volts, so it automatically sets in. And we can see right now that... Um, my, my wattage input at the moment, since it's partly cloudy, is just under 600 watts, which is more than enough for what I need. And, and you can tell that um, my batteries are, are topped off because of the dump load. Both of this has a dump load and this is a dedicated dump load. Uh -huh. That is putting out heat yeah. right now. Yeah. So basically every lumen that's coming down here and being turned into wattage is being turned then into calories just to burn off. Yeah, so that's actually a dump load from solar plus hydro. Yes, this one has a dump load that is only solar and that, that will kick in when it's at, like at high noon on a really sunny day when this dump load just isn't enough. I'll hear this kick on every now and uh, then. Okay. And it's a force fan uh, coil. Uh, one of the other things that I have is um, so actually uh, this this is your DC breaker this, panel. This is all DC. This is the AC Correct. side, right? Correct. All of this is AC, and so this is basically just telling the system where the juice is coming from, and it's going into these twin inverters, because as if you remember when we were discussing, I wanted I wanted I did not want to revisit the system capacity at a later date. I would rather just start with over capacity. And these, um, if I remember the, the literature right, they're about, I have, each of these are 110 because I have 220 going up to my shop. So these are about 7 kilowatt pulse output mm -hmm. or throughput. I don't know what the correct yeah. term is, but so for 90 or 120 seconds they can put out Oh, seven surge, yeah, the surge seven thousand watts. Yeah. So between the two of them, it's just under fifteen kilowatts of surge mm -hmm. power. So you have uh, motor loads that you run on this. I, I do have. I, I have a full woodworking shop okay. up, up there. So uh, and that works fine. So what's the largest motor you start on this system up there? Uh, at, the, at the moment, the largest motor I have is three horsepower. Wow, that's amazing. I do have some five horsepowers that aren't currently wired in, but I'll do that. Okay. This is a, another box that, that was wired in um, with your, your counsel. This controls the fact that I also have a large gas generator just in case. And it, just in case everything else goes bad. And frankly, there are a couple things that I do up in my shop 
that require more continuous consumption than I'm confident of for this. Basically I have an electric smelting furnace for metal casting and an electric kiln for when I fire ceramics. And they might or might not um, be able to work on the capacity here. But just to make sure, if I'm, if I'm teaching a workshop or something and we're just using gobs of power, I can just come and, and throw the gas generator on and yeah. it'll, it'll you, work fine. And so you know this, how many watts those kilns are? Uh, furnaces? The, uh, the kiln is 2,500 watts and the okay. smelting furnace is, I think, about 3 kilowatts. Okay. So yeah. they're, they're gobbling up. Yeah. They're gobbling up the power. I had this put in last year uh, to include that and also to include the fact that the house is now on my, is on the whole system. Originally it was just my workshop in the barn, but the house is now fully backed up. Uh, I'm running a 6.3 cable over, okay. buried over there. So, so this whole system is more than enough for, for anything I can think of, as I said, except for when I have to run the kiln and the smelting furnace, then I just need more, I'm just gobbling up more juice. All right. So, so you still have grid power here that you're connected to? I have to? grid power in the house. Uh, the way I see it, it's sort of the backup, but it's, it's what we're hooked up to. We're living out here in the land of subsidized electricity, so, <laughs> so there's no point in disconnecting. I do not have this system hooked up to the grid. Part of that reason is is that um, when I first approached the power company, they insisted that I have that I purchase a liability insurance policy that actually would have cost about as much as I would have made pumping all of my electricity back to them. So, wow. so at the moment, I just I just I just burn off the power, and uh, since the batteries are protected from overcharging, I'm not worried about any damage to them but the system um, is working um, pretty much as I as I desired it and I will say that for example Outback uh, has um, a pretty darn good technical support and customer service I had to have uh, on this unit here two years ago some insects had crawling in there and had electrocuted themselves and fried the motherboard on mm. that. So I had to send that back to them and they were, you know, pr pretty good about getting it back. And then when I have questions about how things work, uh, they're, they're more than willing to sit and talk with me.